Hi, this is Mrs. Guthrie again, and for today's lesson, this is lesson four in unit two in code.org website development um, com for computer science discoveries. This is a mini project. This is a three day assignment, so this is not something you should finish in one day. Although, if you know exactly what you're doing and you're very quick with this, you may get it done quicker. So I'm going to show you what we'll be doing in our class. Um, first off, the first two bubbles are teaching you some new things that you can use, and they're reviewing some things that you've already learned. So if you did the challenge on lesson three, you learned how to use the break tag for line breaks. Um, and then you've learned how to do paragraphs. I'm going to get into these in just a second. But in bubble two, which we'll get to, it also teaches you how to use lists. And so we're going to work through the first two bubbles. And I'm going to show you what I want to see when you actually start making your web page, which will be on bubble three. All right. If you have not at least attempted to do some of these levels, save yourself some time and go do this independently on your own. And then if you need me, if you get stuck on something, you can come back and watch, watch this. So we're going to look at paragraphs, add paragraph tags to separate the paragraphs. When it says choose from the following activities, you should do all of the activities. I know that sounds like, hey, if I do one, I'm good. But each activity teaches you something different. So you should do all of them, although you can do them in any order that you would like. Sometimes there's like a free play, where, you, and I would save the free play ones until last because you could be there for a long time. I believe lesson three may have had a free play. All right, so as you can see, animals native to the Americas is like one big blob of text. And we want it to look like paragraphs, like what we see over here. So they have typed it up, but they didn't give any tags. So it's simply using the P tags to separate the content into paragraphs. All text should be in P tags. Okay, so now we've made one. I'm going to put period there because it's annoying. It doesn't have that. Next P tag is going to start at line nine. Hmm, did anybody catch my mistake? I forgot to put that slash in there. So we've got an opening tag, closing tag. That is what makes a paragraph element. And this, if you forget how to make multiple paragraphs, remember it will show you how to do so. Is all of the text in P tags? Not yet. So we need to do the same thing with line 11, line 13. And hmm, we got pink text here. Oh yes, I need to go back and put in my closing tags. So you should have an opening P tag and a closing P tag at the beginning and end of every group of text paragraph. So remember, do not do anything with the body in HTML that's down there or any of this other stuff that's at the top. It should all stay there. So I'm going to go ahead and click finish. And that will let code.org know and your teacher know that that is completed. Or at least you feel like it's completed. Just because the bubble's colored in does not mean it's correct. That is something that a teacher has to look at. All right, so now we're going to debug. It says they're incorrect paragraph tags, incorrect P tags. Well, I know from past debugging, we want to see opening and closing tags. And we want to make sure that that slash is in front of the P. So let's see what kind of errors they may have made in this particular uh, workspace. 
All right. Well, indeed, it appears that they have put the closing tag in front of the opening tag. So we're going to get rid of that closing tag and instead switch it out for an opening tag and do the same thing here. I think I might just delete that one. However you do it, so long as you have an opening and closing P tag, that's what we want to see. Why do birds fly to warmer climates in the winter? It's faster than walking. All righty, click finish and go on to the next one. I hope your computer is loading faster than mine. It's being a little slow today. It's been a little slow. It could be because I'm recording. So this one is another debugging the missing paragraph. There's a paragraph that's disappeared. We saw this on a previous level. But there was an error with the P tag. So let's fix this bug. Let's squash the bug. Here we go. I think it's interesting. It even has like green text on here. That tells me, I mean, I'm guessing that means it's really, really bad. Normally you just see pink. So when you have the opening tag, but you don't put the, you know, instead of hitting the shift and getting that in there properly, the period and the uh, greater than sign are on the same button. So that person made that mistake. And again, it looks like, according to the pink, that the error is here where it says going outside. I see H2, I see a closing H2, but I don't see anything wrong with that. The error is actually right up here above it. And as soon as we close that tag, now you see going outside becomes H2 sized. And we fix the paragraph tag as well. So sometimes the pink is not where the error is. We have to look above, above it. So this one is good. We have squished that bug. And we will go to the next one. And I think you're probably doing a fabulous job. If you have not tried these out on your own, and you see what we're doing here, go ahead and pause this video and go do this independently and do it on your own. This time we're going to look at debugging headings. So we want to fix all the pink errors but we also want to adjust the heading tags to be the appropriate size if necessary. I feel like if they're putting that in the do this, it's probably necessary. So we'll see. Oh yeah. So this whole web page is supposed to be about styles of dance. I was never in dance, but I know that ballet and b-boying or break dancing and modern dance are three different types of or three different styles of dance. We want our title of the page to be the largest. So styles of dance should be that H1. But when I look down there at B-boying, it looks like it's almost like a new title. And we didn't start a new topic there. Like, like that's not a new place on the web page. This is still part of, it should be matching ballet and modern dance because they are all on the same level of what they what they are they're all types of dances styles of dancing so let's get rid of the p the pink all right i see in this one we have h1 in the opening but h3 in the closing since it's a title we want it to be h1 in ballet we see h3 at the opening and h1 in the closing but since it's a style of dance it's a sub category 
below the styles of dance that gives us that information. So we want it to be smaller. We want to fix b-boying. I've never heard breakdancing called b-boying. I'm not sure if that, how that's even pronounced, but anyway. Maybe it's based on where you're from. From where I am from, they always called it breakdancing. So, and then we have modern dance. So now we've gotten rid of all the pink and perhaps just as importantly, if not more importantly, our web page now looks logical and consistent and the largest font or the largest heading is the title and then we have our subheadings below it. All right, beautiful work. If you did that, you did great. Let's keep going. We're almost done with this first bubble. I know this one seems like a lot. Hopefully you're able to get through these pretty quickly. You want to add a larger heading. This is just going to be simply making a title. And this is important. You want your web page that you're going to have. You want to have a title. And you want to have those logical and consistent subheadings as well. Page about animals of the sea. A catchy large heading. And title it. Hmm. Hmm. So we have dolphins, coral, and orca whales, and they're just examples of different kinds of ocean animals. We should start typing under the word body. Remember that all of the text, all of the content, eventually images and all that stuff too, goes below the body. Our title. Do you remember what the title type of heading tag we should use? I hope you just said H1, or I hope that in your brain you thought H1, because that is our heading tag for titles normally. All right, so I'm just going to keep it simple. I bet you guys can come up with something really catchy and fun, but I'm just going to call this Ocean Animals. And I'll put a closing H1 tag. Boom. Now I have a title that tells you what this whole web page is about, followed by some subheadings that are examples of different kinds of animals. I will say this though, I like for titles to be capitalized, like a book titles, the first letter to be capitalized. So I'm going to fix that. There we go. All right. All done with that page. See, that was simple. If you were doing it independently, you probably did it faster than me. All right, the last one is actually, if you did not do a challenge level in lesson three, um, you may have missed this. And this is a really important new tag that you are gonna learn. It's a, called a line break. So you know when you're typing along on your computer or on your iPad, if you want to go to the next line, you can hit enter or return. So when you're doing this on your workspace though, hitting enter or return takes you to the next line in, on the workspace, but it doesn't necessarily take you to the next line on your preview. So we are going to add in some line breaks. So this is a haiku. That's one of those, uh, I think it's 21, no, 17 syllables, five, seven, and five. So scrolling through my phone, the internet connects us for better or worse. Okay, this should be three lines in this poem. And we're not going to, we could, put P tags around everything, but that's not what we want. That'll put everything real close together. We actually want it to be, um, have breaks in the middle. So a really important thing to note, this is the first example you might've seen like this, unless you did the horizontal rules, but you do not need, oh, I am so sorry. 
you do not need a closing tag. Okay, you don't need that slash BR, you just have just the BR tag itself. And that is a line break. So I'm going to come down here, scrolling through my phone, below that, and type BR. The internet connects us, BR, for better or worse. Now we don't need another BR below that one because it's the last one. But do you see how that broke apart that one piece of text, um, scrolling through my phone there, it can access for better or worse, without having to put in all those P tags. So something, another way to do it. Uh, now it does say, use this only to do line breaks, not to separate paragraphs. There is reasons for that because paragraphs have their own set of rules um, that you will learn eventually when we learn CSS and you want to keep your paragraphs separated that way. But this, the breaks are particularly useful for poems. It says also for addresses. I didn't even think about that because an address, you put things on different lines, but it's really all one address. It's also good for adding an extra space. Do you see how I can add in extra ones with more breaks? That's a good way to do that as well, when you want to just add in that white space. Okay. Moving on to bubble two. That should have been the last one of those. I will stop this video after bubble two. I know it's kind of long already. But this is important. How to do lists. You will get extra credit for using some of these extra things like lists. This is a new tag. There are two different kinds of lists. There is a bulleted list and there is an ordered list or numbered list. These have to be in a certain order, whereas bulleted lists are not necessarily in any particular order. All right, so we'll start with the bulleted list first. It's just talking about breakfast foods and desserts. And these are just unordered lists. It's important to pay attention that it's called unordered list because that's like the abbreviation that we're gonna be looking at. So you see UL is a tag for an unordered list. And then we also have LI, which shows us those list items. And we're going to look at it. This is, oh look, here's an example of working code. Excellent, so if you wanna see what it looks like, you can pull that down. There's also, what are the two types of list? Ordered and unordered. What is an unordered list? It's just, just bulleted. And then how do I make an unordered list? If you wanna do this on your own without me and you need a little bit of help, it, here is the exact instructions for how to do it, okay? So remember to leave all of this text here. Breakfast foods is H2, that's the, Kind of the subheading there and now we have an unordered list of cereal eggs waffles notice that unordered list ul is that that tag is at the top and at the very bottom of the whole list and then li and the close tag for li is around each of the list items in between okay notice how they're tabbed the unordered list are kind of at this level and then the lists are tabbed in a little bit. So we're gonna do the same thing for desserts. You are going to create your own unordered list. So we're gonna do desserts here. I'm gonna do UL to start my list. Oop, that's not an L. There we go. And it's automatically putting me in the right place, which is lovely. All right, so my first, Type of dessert 
I'm going to put give me some pies. Remember, slash li is the close tag. That means that's the list item. Let's see, how about cake? I did that lie. Cake. And you should do at least three bullets here. We could do a whole bunch of them. There's a lot of desserts out there in the world. We could do cookies. We could do cobbler. All kinds of things. I'm going to do cookies. All right, now I've done my each of my list items open, close, open, close, open, close. But for the entire thing, you see I still have pink here. That's because I have the unordered list. This section of unordered, or this sex, bulleted section has an opening tag, but it does not have a closing tag. So I'm going to close it with a slash UL. And now you see that all my pink code has gone away. You're, you may have different desserts, but yours should ultimately look similar to mine. If it looks like that, pat yourself on the back. You've done a good job. Let's move on to the ordered list. Ordered lists with numbers are important when you're doing like things like ranking things or you're talking about the steps to do something. There's a lot of different reasons to use an ordered list versus the bulleted list. Sometimes it's just preference. Sometimes you just want to have things numbered. All right. The only difference between using the numbers versus the bullets is you're going to call this tag the OL, ordered list tag instead of the UL. Everything else will be done exactly the same. So we're going to add in the OL and the LI tags to structure the content into an ordered list. And if it helps you to see an example while you're working, pull it up and look at it. Okay. I'll leave that there. So we have top five reasons a turtle is the best pet. So these are top five reasons according to somebody. We need, it shows up here, we've got to start the ordered list telling the computer that we are doing an ordered list, OL. Then we need to say, okay, here's my first list item. They are cute. I'm gonna close that. My second list item, And sometimes it doesn't automatically tab over. Get into the habit of trying to keep things nice and organized in your workspace. That is proper syntax. Syntax is just the proper way of um, organizing your work in the workspace. It's kind of like using capital letters and periods when you're doing your writing in ELA class and English class, it helps it be more readable. When you do it this way, it makes your paper, your code more readable. I've got five list items, LI list item, and I've done an open and close on each one. But we can't forget that when we open up the ordered list, when we get done with all of our numbers, we want to close that. OL. There we go. As soon as you put the closing tag, look what happens over here. It puts those five reasons in the ordered list one, two, three, four, five automatically. You did not have to put in any numbers here which is awesome. You could keep going, you could have a hundred reasons and you would never have to put in any numbers as you eat, you know, change things and move things around. It keeps it straight. Okay, 
that is all you have to do for bubbles one and two. I'm going to do another video to show you the actual project for bubbles three and four and to go over that with you. I hope that this was helpful and if you have any questions, let me know. Have a lovely day.